Greetings, I'm Solar Scully, and welcome to the Simpsons Hidden Run Commentary, where I have a confession to make. I love commentating over logos. I'm sorry you had to find out this way, it is a terrible dark secret of mine, but logos, I love them. Uh, but yes, ah, oh, the Vivendi Universal logo. A company that no longer exists, actually, now that I think about it, because it was folded into Sierra and uh, the 20th Century Fox logo with a brum brum, but an um brum, but an 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 a brum brum. Speaking of companies that no longer exist, 20th Century Fox, because it was bought out by Disney, continuing the theme of games I'm covering exclusively this year that are made by Disney, which is a shame because I actually do genuinely like the Fox <laughs> logo. It's quite cool, but we'll never see it again. And uh, yes, even the Gracie Films logo, which. I think it's still a thing. And of course, Radical Entertainment, also no longer with us, uh, quite sadly. I think the last game they made was Prototype 2, and then they pretty much went belly up, which is a bit of a shame, because I mean, Radical Entertainment weren't bad developers, they even developed a fair few games that I like, such as the original Prototype, The Simpsons Hidden Run, obviously, which is what we're covering today, and uh, I mean, uh, The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction, Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster, which I've previously reviewed a couple of, oh, nearly a decade ago now. So yeah, it's a shame to see him gone, but anyway, onto more positive topics, The Simpsons Hit and or Run. Now, released in 2003, developed by Radical Entertainment, obviously, and uh, considered by many to be one of the best Simpsons games ever made, and uh, well, I mean, while I do think there are a few cracks in the design here and there, fairly solid game, pretty significant game in my childhood, which is continuing the theme of games that I'm covering, uh, that of which being games that are significant to me and or my youth, so yeah. Let's get into this. Hidden Run. Hey, hey! I'm endorsing a new cola, kids! And this one isn't poisonous to anybody! That we know of. New and improved Buzz Cola is made from only the finest sugars and waters. Plus, it has a special ingredient, too hot, for the FDA. It'll give you the get up and go you need to do all the pathetic stuff you have to do. Try new improved Buzz Cola. Mmm, cola. Must get Buzz Cola. Man, when I was younger, I laughed at the antics of Homer Simpson. And then I became older and grew up to realize that I am Homer Simpson. Dun dun dun. Well, I mean, except for having a family, beautiful wife, uh, two cars. A large house. Oh, I'm slightly worse off than Homer Simpson. I'm sad now. Ah, oh, well, but anyway, to get into the brass tacks of exactly what The Simpsons Hidden Run is, uh, the general descriptor that you'll usually find from most people is, is that this game is basically Grand Theft Auto with The Simpsons, and that is partially true. I mean, again, you do have a big open world to explore, you do have many missions revolving around driving cars. Uh, again, you can. Okay, I was gonna say you can jack cars, but no, you don't technically hijack cars, you, uh, hitch a ride, as the game's manual would later state. Must. Never. Run. Again. There are some comparisons to be made, but I mean, to be a little bit more specific, it's not quite full GTA, because in Grand Theft Auto, you usually have a lot more things to do. I mean, again, you do take missions from characters, but it, you know, you're also getting into street races, you're, you know, pimping hoes. Uh, running around shooting people, kicking their asses, doing all the uh, general gangland activities that a young man should do in their prime. Where The Simpsons Hidden Run differs in terms of anything else, as you could no doubt tell by the sound design, is that it blends together elements of a 3D platformer, or very light elements of a 3D platformer, I should say, with what's basically just uh, driving mechanics, which does tie into a bit of trivia that I'll no doubt expunge a little bit later on. Uh, but in the meantime, though, yeah, it's not quite completely GTA. You do have an open world, you do have... Uh, driving sections, and you know, you do take missions from characters, but not completely. In fact, in terms of GTA influences, it's more GTA 3 as opposed to, you know, Vice City or San Andreas. Homie, somebody ate every dessert in the house. I need you to run to the store and pick up some of that ice cream with the miniature pies in it. Well, it must have been one of our kids. Probably Millhouse. So, yes indeedy, they did in fact get a lot of the original cast back, save for, you know, some of the more pricier guest stars, and I guess, uh, some of the legacy stars I had, like, uh, Kelsey Grammer and Marcia Wallace or whatever, but, anyway, again, you do have Dan Castellaneta, uh, Julie Naver, N Nancy Cartwright, Yardley Smith, and, uh, you know, uh, Hank Azaria, Harry Shearer and all that, so, again, you do have at least a general palatable bunch of characters in which you can use to, 
you know, flush out your Simpsons voice cast. So again, I mean, that does uh, provide a nice little dividend here. But anyway, our mission is pretty simple. Go to the shops and get ice cream. A day in the life of Solid or Scully, as well as getting cola. In my case, it'll be Pepsi, because I cannot live without it. Hey, Apu, give me a cola and I need another bucket of ice cream with mini pies. What happened to the ice cream with mini pies your wife bought this morning? I probably ate it. I don't remember stuff too good. But in any case, this does pretty much give you a, well, a pretty general taste of exactly what you're going to be doing throughout a lot of these missions. It's, you know, going around to places, collecting items, pretty much just driving around town, really. So that's about as close to the sort of Grand Theft Auto style that you can really get. I mean, the titular hit and run mechanic as it comes into the game does sort of delve into the whole race and chase aspect that made all the games from Grand Theft Auto 1 well, up until the present day, really, with Grand Theft Auto 6 recently being announced at time of recording. Ah, oh, crab juice. Goes well with Kavkalash, or Mountain Dew. But anyway, yes, yeah, so you do have a titular hit and run mechanic where if you cause enough damage to civilians and or property, or even with significant points during the mission, yeah, then the police would be right on your ass. And in which point you'll just have to sort of run away or face the penalty. Uh, which rather than going to jail, as is in typical Grand Theft Auto style, uh, no, instead you uh, pretty much just lose 50 bucks, which is actually kind of pricey in this game because, yeah, a lot of what you're going to be doing throughout The Simpsons Hidden Run is also buying cars as either missions require or, you know, just to drive around in style. But again, they are rather pricey as you get on throughout the game, so uh, while you might have a mission of getting all the cars throughout the game as much as you possibly can, you also need to collect a lot of coins, which can either be found, you know, pinned throughout the level, destroying property, or within those little... Uh, buzz caller vending machines or buzz caller boxes that we destroyed uh, right at the beginning, so yeah. If you see any coins, grab them, because you are going to need them, especially as we go on throughout our adventure in a day in the life of Homer Simpson, the inebriated fool. Homie, Lisa left for school without her science project. Can you get it to her? Oh, do I have to? You can drop it off on the way to work. And I have to go to work? Dear God, Homer's struggles become eerily more relevant to me as I grow older. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, this first chapter of the game, of which there are seven chapters of the game, covering the seven Simpsons. As you see, there is Homer, there is Marge, there's a year at Bart, there's a year at Lisa, then there's a year at Maggie, and there's a year at Grandpa, and of course, the oft forgotten Simpson, Roy. From that lovable episode about Poochie. Yeah, but anyway, this is also... yeah, everything's pretty chill right now, you don't exactly have any timed missions, it's all just... Go to a place and get your lay of the land, really. Explore Springfield, now lovingly recreated with plenty of things to interact with. Uh, again, if you see, like, some sparkly blue glowy shite, which uh, either means that Homer has some Master Thief senses akin to Sly Raccoon, or, well, it's just there for you to pretty much press the triangle button, interact with the thing, and get some tasty Simpsons references from episodes long past, at which point, yeah, the fact that this game released in 2003, this obviously would have been season 15, uh, season 14, I think? Thanks for bringing me my model of the digestive system. Hey, where's the gallbladder? I get hungry, and it was a fig. It was modeling clay. Oh. By the way, Dad, Mom called. She says she needs to talk to you at home before you go to work. Ow! I am too smart. I am too smart. S-M-R-T. I mean, S-M-A-R-T. Yeah, I figured I might as well let that play, especially for the ending quote, but yeah. At uh, the time this game came out, it was only, like, uh, 15, 14 seasons in, so, uh, yeah, according to a lot of people, not quite uh, into the seasonal rot. Uh, I mean, I suppose I might as well go into my sort of stance on The Simpsons as it stands, given, you know, everybody's sort of bizarre relationship with the show, given that, you know, there's like seasons 1 to 10 good, everything else bad, or some people, in, in rather recent years, actually considering some of the recent seasons from like uh, the 30s onwards to be a bit of a turnaround for the show, but yeah, in, in terms of where I at least stand with The Simpsons, uh, in terms of my absolute favourite seasons, for me it's pretty much 3 through 12 that I consider to be the golden period, and uh, then there's pretty much the whole, then there's pretty much I'd say 13 through uh, 17 to be sort of the okayish period for me, which, uh, yeah, I pretty much go from anything from like season one up to the movie. Uh, season one uh, through two, though, I consider to be kind of rough, okay, but I don't know. It's uh, a little bit rough, still finding their feet, but, you know, still containing a lot of good moments throughout, so 
Yeah, if that gives you any indication for the show, I do generally quite like it, but... Yeah. yeah I've just seen a bunch of episodes here and there, really. <sighs> I'm all in a dither, Homer. So many of my possessions have disappeared. I called the police to find the culprit. Culprit, eh? My lawnmower, my cooler, my lawn chair, a family portrait, even Rod's inhaler. What kind of sick individual would take this stuff? Oh, no. I borrowed all of Flanders stuff. Quick, think of an excuse to get out of here. Uh, excuse me, I think I have to go shuck some corn. Smooth. Excellent getaway. But yeah, this is also our first timed mission, of which this game loves because they have no other means of adding penalty mechanics towards a game where your primary uh, penalties really is either getting a hit and run or running out of time. Yeah, as you can tell, unlike a lot of Grand Theft Auto stuff, again, you don't technically die in this game and uh, neither does anybody you interact with. Again, you notice beforehand that I just kicked Flanders in keeping with the character of Homer Simpson. But uh, yeah. Like, you don't technically kill anybody, you also don't technically die, you just sort of respawn if you happen to fall off a large pit or uh, anything else. So, yeah. The only way they can really penalize you is by running out of time, and I suppose since they made this game for the younger demographic, they probably didn't want to, you know, either completely betray the tone of The Simpsons, or I guess also, like, I don't know, I really scare away their target demographic, because... Yeah, this is this game, along with being nostalgic to me, is also nostalgic to a lot of people who played it, you know, way back in the day, so... Yeah. But I mean, the point is, they pretty much get a lot of mileage out of the, oh no, don't run out of time, otherwise you fail the mission and gotta do it again. But at the same time though, they also have like a mission skip feature, where again, if you fail the mission a bunch of times, they actually give you the option to skip it, at the risk of, you know, not getting more of the story, which... You can pretty much do with every mission, save for the final mission in the chapter, so, again, doesn't let you skip the entire game, you do still need to do the final mission, but... Uh, by that same token, though, it's a bit of an odd quirk of game design, which... I don't- again, I don't really know the time frame of this game. I mean, it seems to have had a longer development cycle between this and, uh, The Simpsons Road Rage, which... Uh, hmm, I'll get into that trivia a little bit later, but... yeah. It, it, I don't know, it just seems like maybe Radical Entertainment could have rethought the design a little bit. Especially given that GTA 3 at least had at least a little bit more mechanical depth than this, and, uh, you know, they could have learned stuff from it. Look, I found your missing stuff! Now, about the reward. <laughs> Thanks, neighbor Rooney. Here's your reward. A prayer from the Lord's number one fan. Our Father in Heaven, bless this noble oath. Stupid Flanders getting happiness from religion. Damn that man for finding spiritual peace in the Lord. Wee! And yeah, the physics engine of this game is absolutely fucking flip shit. As you're about to see in a little bit as we actually go uh, exploring for another facet of the gameplay, collectible cards. Which, uh, yeah, collect all the cards in a specific level, then collect them all throughout the game, and you'll unlock a special reward. Uh, by which I mean is basically an unlockable, itchy, and scratchy cartoon that you'll be able to access much later on in the game, but... Yeah, in the meantime though, I'm gonna show you more of this wonderful physics engine before we continue on to our next mission. As we return to the Simpsons household and talk to Marjorie about the fine-feathered fair of Wittgenstein over a game of backgammon. Uh, Insanity Peppers. Wonderful episode, that. Anyway, here's Ralph. Are you my mommy? I think my tummy leaked. Homie, you're late for work. And today's your workplace evaluation with Mr. Smithers. Ha! Ah, you'll find my scorpion farm. Then where will my scorpions live? Only one person can help me. Lenny. Okay, so uh, midway through recording, I'm pretty much going to be handling the cutscenes in the sense that if I find them funny, I'll let them play. If not, then I'll also just sort of let the first mission one play, then I'll pretty much just either give it as a description or just let it play regardless. Whatever, sort of playing it by ear, which is a bit of a running thing throughout this commentary because... Yeah, like, I mean, in spite of maybe some of the missions, especially later on in the game, being a little bit high intensity, I mean, mainly just down to the fucking time gimmick more than anything else, but... Yeah, this game is a very cruisy game, and, uh... I'm basically just sort of doing this to, you know, chillax and sort of wax nostalgic over a bunch of Simpsons references and... I don't know, just sort of take it easy. I mean, it is still during the summer, so... I kind of feel the need to relax. After high-intensity working schedules have made me... Panicked. Feeling the need to drink... The alcohol. Also like Homer Simpson. With his tragic, tragic life when you really delve into the mythology of the Simpsons. Oh, that poor, sweet, angry, 
hate-filled fucking bus, get out the fucking way. And you, what are you doing here? Get off the fucking shot, you weird reject that looks like a young, a slimmer Homer Simpson body double. Yeah, as you can tell, a lot of these cutscenes are done in real time. I guess primarily to show off the alternate costumes that you can also get in the game by uh, visiting the Quickie Mart or... Uh, pretty much any building you can go inside, actually. Uh, you can pretty much just buy different costumes. In a room similar to this, actually, where you also buy the cars, again, you get... Uh, three costumes per level. They do vary depending on which levels you play through, obviously, but... Yeah, I'm trying to remember in this level. I think you get Homer in his undies, uh... Do you get evil Homer in this level? Or that might be for one a bit later on. Ah, uh, whatever. We'll figure it out as we play throughout the game. But, uh, yeah, you do get unlockable costumes. That can be quite fun. And, uh, as you can tell, the cutscenes are also... Well, again, unless, of course, there's specific CGI cutscenes reminiscent of that, uh, you know, the whole Homer in 3D Treehouse of Horror episode. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the cutscenes don't really have a lot of effort. It's pretty much basic lip flap animations and voice acting, which was fairly common for the time, yeah, especially for budget titles, but I don't know. It is what it is, but I mean, you at least have the script and the voice direction, at least mimicking that sort of Simpsons-esque quality, so no real complaints here. But anyway, this is also our first, well... Smash and kill mission. Yes, we must increase our killing power as we chase down Wayland Smithers and uh, murder the boss. Who I guess the police would blame on Barney for the model of his car. Yes, yes. Jerk ass Homer rides again. Oh, excellent. We have the right car for the job. We're salting the earth so that nothing ever grows again. And it just makes you want to say, I am evil Homer. I am evil Homer. Yes, get rid of the evidence, get the Simpson family car so nobody can trace it back to us. Homer Simpson, everybody. Master criminal. We got away with murder. <laughs> oh, yes, I never did like that wiener kid Millhouse. No, but anyway. So yeah, that was also another example. No, Smithers isn't technically dead, although the fact that he seems to be so forgiving the next time he sees Homer is uh, rather bizarre. Then again, I suppose he doesn't technically know it's him, so who knows really. Yeah, but to also talk about the cars in this game, uh, to kind of make up for the fact that there isn't really a lot of depth and basic on-foot gameplay. Well, first of all, the wolves are at old Gil's door. Uh, yeah, again, cars do have a bunch of different stats, which you can check, you know, whenever you enter the car selection screen window thing, uh, by pressing the square button, obviously. So yeah, pretty much buy different cars. They have different stats which you can use for certain missions, although some missions in turn will force you to either use a specific car or force you to buy a specific car, so yeah, you're not technically going to have your pick of the litter with every mission, but generally speaking, the ones they give you should get you through the mission, provided that you're not too reckless, because again, in typical Grand Theft Auto style, damage the cars too much, they will start smoking, and eventually they will, you know, explode after you bail out of the car. Although, what is funny is that unlike Grand Theft Auto, you can actually, like, drive the flaming wreckage of the car, which is... Again, it's completely fucking useless to completing your mission, but it is also absolutely hilarious to see you... Like, just showing so... Like, showing such stubborn determination that you're desperately just trying to go, I can make it! I can make it! Uh, like a man with two broken legs desperately trying to finish the race by crawling on his guts and using his arms. That was a bit of a morbid metaphor, but whatever. We're playing a very morbid game where we beat up nuclear safety technicians, destroy vending machines, and... Drive surveillance vans inside workplaces. Fuck yeah. How can I sleep with that camera? Oh, sexy girls could be watching me on the internet. Stupid cameras. You should be smashed. I'll destroy you at your power source. <laughs> uh, man, I wish I could do this in my workplace, although I don't have an easy way to access the cameras. But yes, this mission is basically the result of somebody on the development team realizing, hang on a second, we have basic platforming mechanics, so we could use this for tertiary gameplay. But they didn't quite develop the combat and platforming mechanics quite enough so that we could get more levels in the game. So yeah, this is pretty much the one level that really utilizes any sort of platforming design uh, for any significant degree, which in this case is pretty much just an easy destroy all the power boxes that control the cameras. Why they're here are not fixed to the wall as anybody's guess. Uh, whatever. Simpsons universe, nothing makes sense. And uh, if you try and make sense of it, you'll turn into a Frank Grimes sort of I'm Homer Simpson! Yeah, kind of thing. It is a bit of a shame that they don't actually have more levels like this, because I feel like it could easily just uh, 
add a little bit more gameplay variety from all the car missions, but I don't know. I mean, it's basic for what it is, and I mean, there's... I'm not going to always sleep over not having more of these missions, but I feel like it would have been nice to at least utilize more of the platforming gameplay that you implemented into the game. Finally, I can get some sleep. Mindless drones, return to your ugly families. Ow! Ah, uh, another successful workday completed where we do absolutely nothing. Well, much like in real life, it is time for us to return to our ugly families, drink the beer, watch a bit of television, decompress from all the lonely, lonely nights that we've been forced to suffer waking up and going to work again. The days are lonely, as I continue to work as a gothic narrator, completely contrasted by the bright, lovable environment of The Simpsons world. Oh yeah, keep talking, dude. Yeah, you also have plenty of shortcuts to also take in the level design, and in terms of how uh, Springfield is designed as a city level, it's less of a interconnected city and more of like a more of like a circular level that kind of weaves into itself, which I get I kinda of get the impression was intentionally designed that way because, you know, there are a fair few races you can also do throughout the game and I suppose they needed that design to be there in order to, you know, have a bit of a circular track so that you can make your way back towards a specific point in the level. And in that sense, they did actually have a lot of common sense to design the tracks in a way in which they have a lot of shortcuts you can take. And, you know, a bunch of different routes to, you know, easily cut down on lap times and, you know, sort of ensure that you can do a lot of the time missions fairly successfully. So, yeah, there is a fair bit of thought put into the car design, but on that note, I am Solid Scully, keep it new metal and next time on The Simpsons Hidden Run, well, more shenanigans involving The Simpsons family. Catch you later. Take that, bitch.